We're here uh, today as the Minnesota Budget Solutions Coalition uh, to announce uh, a document uh, that's uh, you can get a copy over there if you haven't picked it up, which essentially uh, makes over $6.6 .6 billion in cuts to state spending. Uh, this is done with no federal dollars. It's done with no accounting shifts. Uh, and it's not a, 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 a document that even we would even consider uh, to be uh, finished, essentially. We've looked at several different areas. We haven't looked at all areas. Uh, there's uh, transportation uh, hasn't been looked at, uh, and some of the others, some of the other state government. But this is something that we've essentially shown that you can balance the budget, and not only balance it, but actually have a surplus without raising taxes uh, and without accepting uh, uh, federal money. I want to uh, uh, point out our group is a, a group of nine nonprofit organizations, and we've had a lot of citizen input on top of that. Uh, where the, the groups are the Associated Builders and Contractors, the Campaign for Liberty, EdWatch, the Freedom Foundation, the Minnesota Family Council, the Minnesota Free Market Institute, the NFIB Minnesota Chapter, Minnesota Majority, and the Taxpayers League of Minnesota. And again, we've been uh, identifying areas where we can reform state spending. We think that the legislature and the governor should go beyond uh, the proposals that have been uh, laid out so far. This is a time it's an, of economic crisis, and it is a time of reform. And I want to turn this over to Mary Ann Stebbins. I just want to talk a moment about our current economic situation. Uh, Minnesota unemployment is at 8.1 percent, and our state economist Tom Stinson predicts that that's going to be 10 percent or higher by the end of the year. He's also predicting that this recession is going to last uh, well into 2010, possibly beyond. So uh, he doesn't say this, but unemployment lags the economy. So that number is likely to continue to get worse and to extend into the next biennium at the very least. Uh, and the unemployment figures are really, the, that's the U3 number, and that's just part of the picture. If you want to look at the U6 number, which is uh, pe which are people who have uh, stopped looking for work or people who are employed part-time, not by their own choice, that number is closer to 15 percent. Uh, so it's, it's a bit more serious than we, we typically understand. Uh, Minnesota's general fund spending has increased by 29 percent since 2004. Uh, we'll get into this a little more, but uh, most people are cutting back, and I don't think it's unrealistic to ask government to do the same. Minnesota is number 41 for a friendly business climate, so there are a few states that are closer to the bottom than Minnesota, and that is according to the Tax Foundation, which compiles the numbers on all 50 states. And we know anecdotally that businesses are leaving TCF, Northwest Airlines, and you know we don't even know about a lot of the smaller businesses. So this is obviously not going to help our unemployment figures. Government does not produce. Those unemployment numbers are only going to start to come down when we allow more capital to remain in the private sector where they produce the jobs. I just have one. Uh question that I would pose to the, uh, the state legislators that are working on uh, the state budget. If uh, President Obama can demand restructuring at General Motors, uh, why can't the citizens of the state of Minnesota expect that the legislature reform, truly reform the way government operates and the way government appropriates money? Uh, President Obama has gone into the private sector and uh, demanded that there be wage restructuring at the top. He's also uh, demanding that uh, union contracts be opened and renegotiated. Why can't we do the same here in the state of Minnesota? Uh, when I first was elected to the legislature, uh, I won't say how long ago, uh, the state budget has more than trebled in, the, in that period of time. We're looking at a $15 billion increase in state spending in just uh, the last 10 years. Uh, let's look at two major items. They constitute over 70 percent of general fund spending, uh, K-12, Health and Human Services. In those two areas alone, first and foremost, K-12 education. K-12 education spending has almost doubled again in, the last, uh, in, the la in only the last 10 years, and we're actually educating fewer students. 
how in the world can you spend twice as much money uh, to educate fewer students than we did just 10 years ago and say that we can, are going to continue on the path that we're currently on and expect we're going to have any changes uh, to the positive in the future. So more spending, uh, less in the way of outcomes. Healthcare, I don't think anyone needs to uh, look too far into the healthcare spending to know that the major reforms need to be made within uh, healthcare because again, healthcare spending has more than doubled over the last uh, 10 years. Yet there seems to be a disconnect here in the state legislature because just last week, uh, the House passed a budget resolution uh, that increases taxes by $1.5 billion and yet at the very same time increases spending over the last biennium uh, by almost 5%. Uh, something is wrong and we're here to deliver some suggestions and some remedies for how to truly reform state budget. Uh, there's plenty of time left because they haven't done anything yet. You know, one of the major problems we've got in this state is that a majority of our state legislators aren't listening to the people. Uh, in response to these staged listening sessions that were conducted by legislative leaders throughout Minnesota, you'll recall those a, a few weeks ago, uh, we, we created our own listening session. We, we created a virtual listening session in which we invited people from across the state to comment on what they thought about the state budget crisis. We've received literally hundreds of messages from concerned citizens telling lawmakers that they need to live within their means. And to give you a, a little sample, I just want to play two minutes of, uh, of excerpts right now so you can hear for yourselves what people have to say about the state budget crisis. Our family follows simple math, and I believe our government should too. If we don't have the money, we don't spend it. In our family, we cut costs by using cloth diapers. We're not eating dinner out. We're not going to movies. We're not getting babysitters. We're not going on vacations. We're packing lunches. And metaphorically speaking, I'm wondering, are you packing lunches? Are you cutting costs? Are you guys taking a pay cut like my husband is? Uh, I don't think we have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. In these tough economic times, everyone needs to tighten their belts and sacrifice and live within their means especially the state government. This is the consistent theme that we are hearing from the citizens of Minnesota. We must live within our means. Each week from now until the end of session, we are going to be delivering an audio CD to every state legislator containing hundreds of messages from concerned citizens so they can hear for themselves what the people have to say about the state budget crisis. We also believe that voters need a way to gauge their elected officials' position on this important issue. Today, we sent a letter to all lawmakers inviting them to sign the Live Within Our Means commitment form. The form provides a visible way for lawmakers to demonstrate their commitment to putting spending cuts ahead of tax increases to solve the state budget crisis. We'll be tracking their responses at livewithinourmeans.com, and we've given lawmakers a week to respond to our request. On April 15th, we begin notifying voters as to how their elected officials stand on this important issue. 